let's do some mechanical modifications to the Octava Mark 219. This is a large diaphragm condenser microphone made in Tula, Russia, or at least it used to be. I recently found out that this microphone is no longer being manufactured and so I ran out and I grabbed a used one at a very reasonable price. You can find these brand new for around $350 to $450 depending on where you go. I got this one used in very good condition for $160. So good luck to you if you already have one. You've already done probably the hard part. We're going to open it up and perform some mechanical modifications. Mechanical modifications means uh, changing physical characteristics of the casing of this microphone. I will not be talking about changing the diaphragm or circuitry or doing any kind of real detailed electronics work like that. We're just going to uh, get rid of some of these grills up in here that look really cool but add maybe a little too much coloring for my taste. And also, we're gonna work on that body resonance. I don't know about your Mark 219, but my casing rings at an A. So if I listen closely and if I knock on this, it actually produces these, an A note. So uh, we're gonna open this guy up and dampen that resonance and clear up some of that head basket reflection coloration. The tools we'll need to do this are two flathead screwdrivers, one large, one small. Uh, here's a pair of angle cutters or wire cutters. I'll be using a Dremel tool to clear out this uh, grill on the front and back. If you can't get your hands on a Dremel tool, you can carefully use some of these cutters here just like this. Um, as always, we've got eye protection, some gloves, and some hearing protection because I'll be using this Dremel tool to cut through the uh, front grates there. Also, um, after we do that cutting, you're going to want to have some black paint of some kind. I've got spray paint. I don't recommend this. I'll be applying the spray paint with a brush or a Q-tip or something, and that's going to be just to the pieces of metal that are exposed uh, because the finish will have been chopped off effectively. I really recommend some like black automotive detail paint or something. This could possibly get messy, it's just what I have laying around. I will not be spray painting the dang casing, although you can if you like, you know, give it a new finish. Why not? Um, I've got some silicone caulking here. This is just some uh, waterproof uh, caulking for kitchen, bathtub, tile, countertop. Um, you might want to get some that's just designed for windows, as I think that tends to have the best resonance dampening, but again, this is what I've got, and it's going to be better than nothing. We'll be using this to fill in some of the body here so that it absorbs the, uh, the sound. Okay, time to open this guy up. So we start with the small screwdriver. We're also going to need to take this off. I like to work on a soft white towel because pieces don't go very far if they come flying out. It's very easy to keep track of things. Uh, like for example, when you open up this body, you're going to see there are these two copper pieces. And those help keep tension on the base of the, the microphone here. So now that we've got it open, uh, this is our diaphragm. You want to make sure to not damage this. We've got a uh, one of our resonator rings here that helps protect it incidentally, but that's not its primary purpose and you just want to be very careful. So I'll gently rock that out and those two pieces fall right out. So we will be needing those later on. 
This is the big secret to removing the circuit board, is that this is our screw right here. Pretty cool. These are some magnetic switches in the back. So in here is a little piece of metal that these magnets actually move to make the uh, electrical connection. It's pretty neat. I'm just gonna set this away somewhere safe. And now we've got the two pieces that we're really going to be operating on today. The rear side here seems to be coming off without needing to use the soldering iron, which is very nice. So I'm just gently prying it away from the frame with the small screwdriver. Look at that. She comes right out. You can see some of our glue there. I may end up using epoxy to put this back in place. Let's see if I can do the same thing to this one. Here we go. How about that? So now we're left with the parts that we're really going to be operating on. Let's get started. I've got three bits here. Here's our saw blade bit. And here's a polishing sanding bit. And in case I need to, here's like a, uh, a diamond bit, uh, diamond drill kind of bit. So I'll start by making my first cuts along there and see what I can do.
I'm happy that part's over. I'm going to have to epoxy this uh, top grill piece back in. And in fact, I'll probably do the same thing to this other one because it would be pretty silly to have this fall out at some other point in time. Let's get some caulk in there. At this point, we've got the silicone caulk in place and we're going to need to let that dry for a day before we can finish it. And the surgery is effectively uh, mostly complete at this point. You can see I've used the Dremel to really smooth out uh, pretty decently those rough edges that were cut there. And after the silicone dries, all we're going to need to do is uh, put the paint on these spots here to help clean up the physical appearance. We're going to need to glue our screens back in place using some epoxy. And then after that dries, we reassemble the microphone. Now that the caulking has dried a little bit here, let's get some paint on our new creation. Cool, now it's time for epoxy. If you haven't worked with epoxy before, this is um, some strong stuff. You do not want to eat this stuff. Both of these compounds mix together and becomes a very, very strong glue. It works on metal, it works on wood, works on plastic, works on children, dangerous stuff. I want to make sure which one I want to put in the front or the back. It doesn't look like it matters too much. Let's just see if one fits in better than the other. I mean that snaps right in place. That's beautiful. I'm going to flange out these edges, flare them out just a little bit so that it snaps against the, the railing nicely. Stuff also smells like burning plastic. We don't need a lot. That's probably just fine.
Just a few dabs like that is going to do all the work. You do not need a lot of this stuff. It's not going to the moon. You're just going to record some music with it. And that's done too. Now it's time to put the uh, the other mesh back in the top. We'll do the exact same thing. Actually, we're gonna put some on the metal grate and then drop it on top. At this point, the surgery is very, very close to being complete. So we just want to give a few minutes and let that epoxy dry. And then we're going to be good to go to, uh, to reassemble this beast and see what it's looking like and sounding like. I can tell you it already has a lot less resonance to that body. I mean, it just sounds, I can't hear a ring in it at all. After much deliberation, I have decided to uh, remove the resonator discs from the front and back. Uh, the reason that I believe the resonator disc is designed or incorporated into this design is because of the dark coloration from the original uh, grill that was on the front and back of the casings. I think that uh, the resonator disc being designed to lift high frequency, provide a high frequency boost, was a method of compensating for uh, a loss of brightness because of so much head basket reflection. But now that that large grill is removed from our microphone, I see no reason to really have a high-end lift on it anymore. And uh, from what I've read online, uh, removing it smooths out the high frequencies a little bit, and I'm cool with that. Um, so what we're looking at here is there are four screws on the front and back, and you need a really tiny screwdriver to do it. Um, I've gotten a hold of a eyeglass repair kit screwdriver from Walgreens and that's going to be what I use because my tiny screwdriver is actually too large. Now this part is probably the most potentially treacherous aspect of what I've done here. Uh, so far we've only done stuff that's r really kind of cosmetic and mechanical but now we're actually getting close to the diaphragm itself. 
and we don't want to slip with the screwdriver and put a hole through the diaphragm because then the entire mic is basically wasted. Um, yeah, I could install another capsule, but that's not the purpose of this experiment. So let's take a look at removing the, the resonator discs from the front and back of this capsule here. So we have the four screws on the front and the four screws on the back. I'm going to start with the back because that's a lower risk area. And so that way I can kind of get the hang of how the screws handle. Considering this is a circle, I'm going to treat this as though it were a uh, like a car wheel. And when you're when you're dealing with tension around a circle, it's always good if possible to try and remove and and re screw things in such a way that the tension is balanced across the circumference. Removing the rear plate first also has the added benefit of being able to flip the diaphragm over and not exposing it to damage because this, this plate uh, actually is, is protecting it in the front now as I'm doing the surgery on the back. There's a little bit of dirt in here I'm not going to blow on this. You don't want to ever blow directly on the diaphragm of a microphone. It's not dirty enough to the point that I am going to want to try to clean it, although it would be nice. Now, the, this is not a dual diaphragm microphone. This is a cardioid single diaphragm microphone. So this stuff in the back here, I don't think is really going to have too much effect on the sound uh, to begin with. When we see the front of the microphone, I get the feeling that we're going to see some more dirt there as well. But uh, I'm not going to try to clean it. There are a couple, there are a couple spots online that talk about cleaning diaphragms, and they say to use distilled water and uh, watercolor brushes, and very, very gently brush the dust off the diaphragm and let it dry in the window in the sunlight. But uh, I will not be doing that today. I am content with the microphone as is. And when it gets really dirty, then I'll worry about it. Maybe I'll make another video. So as I'm screwing these back in, um, I am not putting them completely tight just yet because, like I said, I want to try and balance the tension across. Someone might be asking, well, if we're not putting the resonator disc back in, why are we putting the screws back in? What I've read is that according to Michael Jolie, who in my opinion is the United States foremost expert on Octava microphones, he says he puts them back in because the capsule is held together by the screws, largely in part. So I'm not going to leave them out. I will be putting them back in. The last thing I want is the capsule to fall apart. Now I'll go around and um, put some good tension on all the screws. I don't want to he-man them. It's not going to the moon. I'm just going to record some cool music. And I'm going to 
gonna just kind of screw them in until they stop. I'm not gonna put too, too much tension on them. Here we go. Feeling good. Okay. And it appears as though I may have pushed them a little too far, even. Because now they're pushing up against that resonator disc. No wonder I was having issues. So let's back these out just a bit. How silly of me. Something you'll notice is that we have a cable coming through the resonator disc. My intention is to remove the screws, remove the resonator disc, and then use my angle cutters to very carefully cut the actual disc itself, which I suppose would make this a uh, irreversible mod. At this point now, there's a decent gap in between the back of the diaphragm and my work surface here. So I'm going to apply some back pressure and, and hold on to this diaphragm while I'm unscrewing these. Now if you want to try to keep your resonator disc, what you're going to need to do is unsolder this point here. And there we can see some of the, the dirt and age on this diaphragm. And there we go, and they're off. This is the part where we have to be extremely careful. In fact, I'm gonna drop these in by hand to get them going. And again, I'm gonna try and create a, a balanced tension across everything in an alternating pattern here. So this is where a slip up is going to ruin my day. Now it's time to put everything back together. Here's our rear plate, and we know because it's got the switches, and this just sits right back from where it came. And I'll put our retention screw here. These two metal pieces, from the very beginning, need to go in the sides here.
and we're done. And we have a very beautiful looking microphone now that we've gone and gotten rid of that massive tank-like grill on the front. I hope this has been a helpful video for anyone who's been wanting to modify their Mark 219 but weren't sure how to do it. Uh, I was very surprised that this microphone had been around for so many years, but no one had actually made a DIY video on how to perform the mechanical mods yourself, so we finally have one now. If you have any questions, feel free to post them in the comments. Uh, subscribe to the channel, like us on Facebook, and uh, have yourself a super groovy musical day with your new modified Mark 219. Thanks for watching, guys.